Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I am Go VR Go Home. Today we have a very special double unboxing, double overview of this Rapido uh, FP7 HO scale locomotive. We're gonna open these up, we're gonna take a look to see what comes inside, and uh, we're just gonna put them on the track, run them, see how they sound, and we'll talk a bit about them. Stay tuned. Okay, so with these HO scale FP7 units, uh, they came out a couple of months ago from Rapido Trains, and they're very nice. Uh, they've done a lot of different variations of this, but uh, there's a couple of things that really stay consistent. For example, the artwork on the boxes, the boxes are always really nice, really well done, uh, very thick. Uh, it's a thick cardboard and uh, I'll try not to get my hand in there too much, but uh, I'm gonna open it up. So here's your GMD manual for the FP7. It comes with uh, all the instructions, slight overview, both French and English. I'm pretty sure I was just flipping through the French. Ah, here we go. I think this is English. Yep. So breaking it in, information about uh, damaged or missing parts, radio antenna, ditch lights, fun stuff. I'll let you look through that if you pick one up. There's also a few other things here. Uh, let's see, special edition via rail that's, uh, that they offer. Uh, information about the GMD-1. Cool. White River Productions. Neat. Exploded Parts Diagram. It's a lot of little parts. Now I paid 305. Uh, Canadian each uh, from Otter Valley Trains. There's one, so you can tell it's the uh, Ontario Northland. It's number 1515 in the Chevron scheme. What's in here? Uh, just a few extra little bits. The antenna, there's a bell. Okay, we'll have to add all that stuff after. Shouldn't be too hard. And move that one to the back. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. Box. Comes with all the same stuff. Don't need to look at that twice. And we have another. It was 1517. These are awesome. I, I'm really excited to run these. Normally you run them as a pair uh, and they'll be end to end because when it goes from one area, uh, let's say for example, if you're at one station, you can take your freight, take your passenger all the way to, you know, a few, a few stops away. And instead of it having to rotate the locomotive or, um, uh, you know, needing to like turn it around somehow or whatnot, it just goes in reverse and the other one's pointing in the other direction. So it's, uh, it's very, very easy to go in multiple directions with these uh, as per the prototype. We're going to open up one of these here. We're going to get it on the track and we're going to look at all the little bits. Okay, so we've got number 1515 here out of the box comes in this nice plastic clear slip cover just to keep everything in its place. And that opens. And then you've got your clear soft plastic. And there's another one on the bottom. There we go. It's very clean. 
almost too clean. There we go. Okay. So I'm just going to put some of this stuff away here and then we're going to take a closer look. Okay, so I've got them both out of the box. They're both on the track here. They look so bright and awesome and shiny and new. They have that new train smell, which is awesome. So taking a look at the sides. Now, I had one of these uh, as a child, but it was a Tyco. And I can tell you that this is a huge step up from that. I mean, these are see-through grills right along here and that's I believe those were brass etchings uh, all the grab irons are separately applied which are really nice it's all see-through there and uh, you've got the marker lights right above the number boards which I do believe the number boards do light up but I'll double check that got the uh, windshield wipers and the uh, the headlight there that big large beacon there geez uh the nice flag i believe that's the union jack uh with the trillium for ontario and uh, the chevron the stripes for the plow the bell on top there with the all the other grab irons that almost look like eyebrows just saying and uh Got the crisp lettering down the side with all the little rivets that you can uh, that you can actually see. I believe uh, that's a winterization hatch up here. Now I did add the little pieces in there as well they just kind of they don't really pop in they just kind of sit in so i might have to glue it in there but i just sat it in there for now because they were they would stay other side is no different uh now all these specifications are per road name uh because obviously if you get a cp1 uh, or the the montreal uh, commuter it might look a little bit different but as for the ontario northland and uh, when they did rebuild them and whatnot. Very nice. Now, at one single time, these could pull about 15 or 16 freight cars, uh, five passenger, and then a flat car that would have a refrigerator box on it, and then also a refrigerator car and a caboose. So these were little workhorses for the time, and... GMD did a great job keeping them in service as long as they did. Uh, some as early as the, I think I want to say the 19, late 1950s, uh, 1960s as well. And uh, eventually, some of these even got sold off to Go Transit. And uh, they were obviously repainted and renumbered. And then Go Transit used them as well. So there's a little bit of history for you. Okay, so I've got power to the track here. We're gonna start her up. You can see, obviously, as soon as there's power that's applied to the track, the number board on the front will light up. So let's take a listen now to the startup sequence here. All right, so then obviously your zero is going to be your headlight. Does turn on there, yeah, you can kind of see it. F1 is your bell. It's a very nice bell. F2 is your horn. You can press it, and it does a short one, or you can hold it down for a longer horn. F3 is your full throttle. We'll get into that later. F4 is dynamic brake. F5 is the roof mounted spotlight, which this one doesn't have. Uh, F6 is the ditch lights, which, I mean, it doesn't have ditch lights, so. Uh, and then F7 to dim the headlight. 
Yeah, it does work. Uh, F8 is your startup or mute or shutdown, whatever you want to call it. And the F9 is your class lights, which are just colored in white. Now you can see that right above the uh, number board there. Uh, now you can make the, the class light green uh, by going F10. I'm going to see if I can do that. Nope. Okay, so F12 is your Doppler, which is slow. Nice. Uh, F13 is a rail squeal. Because it has to be moving in order for that to work. Uh, F14 is your steam generator. F15, you go into switching mode. F16 is a Doppler horn, but really fast. Nice. Uh, F17 actually turns off the number boards if you really wanted to, but we like them lit up nice looking there. Uh, F18 does turn on the rear light. So it's a, it's a red light on the back there. Really nice. And F20 is the brake set or release if it is equipped with the locomotive. So we're going to go back to the function. There we go. Perfect. So we're just going to start moving her forward here and see how she works. And uh, we're going to listen to the engine rev. There we go. Perfect. So I'm going to change the road number because right now they're both still 03 as per the factory settings. And then uh, I'm going to do a couple of laps around and then we're going to see how they perform as a pair. Okay, so just a few more things here that I do want to show you uh, as far as the underside and the truck detail. There is normally quite a bit that Rapido does to make these things look even more realistic. And I just want to show you that. Hopefully you can pick all that up there. A lot of truck detail. They're very complex. Very nice. This is the back side here. There you go. And the very front. So now we're going to put them on the track together and we're going to run it as a pair. One of the things that I really like to do is see how well they are speed matched right out of the box. Obviously they're both the same company so you're expecting to have it to be near perfect here because of the same equipment, same everything except for the road number. So we're going to see how well they work as a pair. So I'm going to do about four or five speed steps just to show you. And they're both going to go in the same direction. But as you can see, they are not connected there. There's a little bit of a, 
I'll do it like this. Let's start it over here. There we go. There's a bit of a gap there. Here we go. Four speed steps. And in the other direction. Now, obviously they haven't been really broken in yet, but I'm really excited to see them run as a pair here. So I wanted to make sure that they would be at least, you know, even remotely close to being perfect here so that I don't have to do any further adjustments.